Hey guys and welcome back. We all want to boom those drives and to be able to do that we have to launch the ball high, get it to penetrate through the wind and get a lot of carry distance. Now the opposite of that would be launching it low and getting too much spin. So what happens sometimes when we launch it low? I see a lot of players doing this uh, without even realizing that they're doing this. So we're hitting down into the ball too much. Maybe some of you guys out there I know a lot of people struggle with, I used to struggle with the same thing as coming down too steep over the top. I'm hitting down into the golf ball on a very negative kind of angle of attack. So my ball is gonna naturally launch lower. The low, more I hit down in the golf ball, I'm taking loft off the club and hitting it more down into the ground. So I get a lower launch. And as I hit down on the ball, a lot of times I'll flip and add loft to that. So I'm hitting too far down and I'm getting a lot of spin on the ball. So let's go ahead and try that out. I'm gonna to try to hit down into this one too much, get a lot of spin on it, and let's see what our launch angle and our spin rate is with our flight scope. There we go, perfect example. That, so that one kind of took off low, rose up, and then faded off. So that's one of those that you see that kind of do this, and then they kind of fade out. So if we look at this on the flight scope now, it's gonna tell us some numbers for our launch. Our club head speed on that one was 118, so good club head speed. 260 total distance, so not a lot for a 118 club head speed, it's not a lot of distance. The vertical launch was only 7.8, so that means I'm really launching it low. That ball's taking off low to the ground. And my spin was 4168, that's a lot of backspin on there. Ideally, I'd like to launch that ball, let's say at least 11 degrees. So that one launched here, I wanna crank that up a little bit so it's going higher. And now that if I take that spin off of there, so that one kind of went like this and it lost a lot of energy going up and down. If I take the spin off, it's gonna penetrate, launch high and then penetrate through the wind to get the maximum amount of distance. So let's go ahead and try one now. And I'm gonna give you three tips. Let's actually do four tips that are really gonna help you to launch it higher and to take the spin off that shot. So number one, I wanna aim for the top of the face. The higher I hit this ball in the face, the higher it's gonna launch. Your, your club face is actually rolled a little bit. So at the top of the driver, there's a little bit more loft. That's gonna get a more higher launch angle. It also has what's called a gear effect. Now gear effect means if I'm looking at this golf ball, let's try to go close to the camera. If I hit it off the top of the driver, what happens is the driver face actually opens up, adding more loft, getting more uh, higher launch. And then that kind of, because the ball is stuck to the face, it rolls the ball forward and gets a little bit of top spin on there. Now it's not really top spin. It's actually just a little bit less back spin but that's the idea with it. So I'm gonna hit it off the top of the driver. That means I need to tee it up nice and tall. I usually go about a half a ball above the driver. If this is my normal ball position with my driver, kind of off the logo of my shirt or my left ear, I'm gonna go ahead and play it a little farther forward. Now I'm also gonna make my stance just a little bit wider, especially for those of you guys that have a narrower stance. If I drop my right foot back a little bit, now I'm getting more behind this golf ball. So I'm gonna hit it higher on the face. That's gonna get it more launch and, more, and lower spin. I'm gonna play the ball a little bit farther up in my stance. That's gonna get it to launch higher. I'm gonna drop my back foot back. Now I'm tilted behind this ball. That's gonna to get to launch higher. And then lastly here, I wanna feel like I'm, I'm letting my wrist bow. So we talked about coming in steep. There's a section of the website called the move. So if you go to the top speed golf system, we talk about the move where I'm actually shallowing this club out and I'm getting my wrist to kind of bow this way. That takes some loft off the driver and that's gonna help me to take some spin off of there. So now I'm hitting up on the ball slightly, positive angle of attack. Everything is getting this ball to go higher and higher and I'm gonna go ahead and take some loft off this driver so that I have the sensation that I'm kind of doing this. I'm taking negative loft and hitting up on the ball to get a little bit of top spin. I wanna have the idea that I'm gonna launch it high and get it to spin forward even though that's not really gonna happen. That's the, the idea that I have in my mind as I'm doing this. So let's try these factors out. Ball a little bit up, high on the face, stance a little bit wider, and now I'm gonna feel like I really bow this lead wrist and I, I have this right wrist bent back so I can take the loft off the driver. Again, that's gonna be my feeling, and we're gonna see if we can get this nice high knuckle ball. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go, so it didn't quite catch that one perfect. Had a little bit too much spin on there. But let's see what the numbers were. So 296 total distance. Club head speed wasn't as good. I actually didn't rip that one. It was only 113. My spin, my launch angle was 10 degrees. So again, it wasn't perfect. And my spin rate was down to 2679. 
So I took off a lot of spin, got it to launch higher, and picked up a good 30 yards with five miles an hour less club head speeds. So if I caught one a little bit better, hit it harder, I'd be well over the 300 yard mark. So take those tips out there, you're gonna launch it higher, spin it less, you're gonna rip a ball. All right guys, I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an even better bonus for you. If we wanna get distance in the golf swing, we've gotta get a lot of lag, and then we've gotta let that lag go. Well, I've got my number one lag video. I'm gonna play a preview of that here in a second. If you're on a desktop device, go ahead and click the link that pops up in your screen. If you're on a phone or a tablet, click the iCard that's somewhere on your screen right now. That's gonna take you to where you can get instant access to that full video. Plus, you're gonna get five videos from our top speed golf system. Never gonna cost you a dime. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Click that thumbs up button that really helps us out. And also remember to subscribe, that way you'll see our newest videos. See you guys in a live video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.